Today on Listen Up, prisons, police, and public safety. Canada makes them a spending priority, but critics ask, what about the criminals behind the problems? We'll explore the controversy next. Welcome to Listen Up, the show that digs behind the headlines to explore current affairs from a Christian perspective. I'm Lorna Duick. Canada's federal government is relentlessly pursuing its crackdown on crime, continuing a long line of legislative actions intended to keep those convicted of serious crimes behind bars longer. Today, we're going deeper into the controversy. Later in the show, we'll meet a mother whose son is behind bars for murder and will be there for life. We'll also learn about programs motivated by faith, quietly working with Canada's inmates to bring about change. I believe that there are a, there's a very high percentage of people who we have in prisons that don't belong in prisons. For more on the government's plan, we're joined by MP Chris Warkington from Ottawa. He sits on the Public Safety and National Security Committee that's helping push Canada's crackdown on crime. Mr. Warkington, thank you for being with Listen Up. Well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, there have been critics. First, we had 400 doctors and scientists say the uh, bill on the drug plan won't reduce crime. Now we have the Church Council on Justice and Corrections saying the plan to build bigger jails and incarcerate for longer is a bad idea. At the core of all the criticism, I think what I'm hearing is that the tough on crime approach doesn't understand how criminality is repaired. What's your reaction to that? Well, I think the, the, there's a difference of opinion, clearly. Uh, my opinion is, is that Canadians should feel safe in, in their homes and in their communities. As a father of three kids, uh, I just can't think of a, a more important priority. Okay, now the Correctional Investigator of Canada, his annual audit report, said at least one in four admissions to federal jails has some form of mental health illness. And the argument is they need treatment, not incarceration. What do you say to that? We don't believe that there should be a, um, a, a system within our prisons uh, to, to, uh, to, to take care of uh, mental health uh, patients. We believe that, 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 that these people believe, belong in hospitals in, and in healthcare facilities. Uh, but we do believe that uh, those people that are, that are uh, responsible for the actions that they, that they do take when they do uh, commit crimes, we have to have uh, a criminal justice system that protects Canadians. Now, the very critics that are coming from the, uh, the uh, Church Justice Council also receive $7 million a year to work on reintegrating and healing sex offenders after they're out. Are you surprised that you're getting this kind of pushback from the churches, that this is just bad people management, the Tough on Crime program? Well, let's, let's, let's be frank about this. The Church Council on Justin, Justice and Correction represents a small minority of church-going public. When they were before uh, my committee, which is Government Operations and Estimates, uh, I asked the question to a representative of this group, and I asked, do you believe that people who rape children should go to prison? Uh, the response from this organization was not necessarily. Uh, the, the, this group of people represents a small minority uh, of, of opinion out there. Most people, most parents, most grandparents believe that those people who, who attack our children should be put into prisons and, uh, you know, kids should be protected. This group obviously takes a different position. Uh, I understand that there's a difference of opinion. My position is, as a father and as a member of parliament, that we need to do everything that we possibly can to protect our kids. Mr. Warkentine, thank you very much. It's the large item number almost nine billion dollars on the uh, proposed budget coming forward thank you for illuminating your opinion on it well let's just be correct about that so far there's been under three billion that have been targeted for these initiatives uh, you know the, the number of nine billion dollars we're uncertain as to where that number is coming from all right all right mr. Warkington thank you very much thanks so much well, that group representing Canada's churches joins us now on set. And Bishop Gary Gordon has traveled all the way from the White Horse to be in studio today. Bishop, thank you and welcome. Thank you, Lorna. Now, the Justice Representative said 
uh, you're a small minority, but we need to correct that because you actually are the advocacy and justice voice for the Catholic Church, the United Church, the Lutherans, the, the Mennonite Central Committee. Actually, these are millions. The Anglican, Church, the yeah. Anglican Church of Canada, millions of Canadians are counting on your advocacy group to represent their justice concerns to government. And he's telling us, you have not checked with your constituencies. The people in the pews don't actually think as liberally about crime as you guys do. Is that true? That could be true, but what we check with is the gospel views on crime and punishment. Ah, so it's not majority vote. No, it's the gospel vote. <laughs> okay. It's the vote of, of Jesus Christ. It's the, the advocacy and the knowledge that criminals are human beings. And so how do we treat somebody in a human way so they become a better human being and are not in jail? We're not talking about violent offenders. Violent offenders need to be incarcerated for a period of time. Okay, and he had that tough question that you, your committee was asked at Justice Committee, should child rapists be in jail? And you, your representative answered, not necessarily. And that obviously is a mental health question. It could be a mental health question. And you see, that's why the question is not necessarily. Probably, yes, but what is the real human situation of that individual that's committed the crime? You heard his passionate argument for safety. I mean, I love Absolutely. the gospel view and I get the compassion, but safety's a big deal. Safety's huge. Uh, safety is really what fuels um, people's motivation in this whole area of increasing the number of jail cells to put more people in jail. I, I wanted about more people in jail. I want to show this graphic that you've put out here where the church says we can knock the price down of keeping prisoners in jail by 75%. What does that possibly look like by putting them in? You're, you're, you're talking community rehabilitation. That's right. And you'll save us 75% of the cost of these super jails. Yeah. What, what could that possibly look like to have people? For nonviolent offenders, so those that have committed a first crime or a second crime, not with violence. You can put them into the community with good probation, with circles of support and accountability, with people that are around them that are producing accountability in their lives, plus maintaining their ability to continue to work and contribute to society. You're speaking, you said, first from the gospel view, but you're also a chaplain in prisons up there in the Yukon. Well, what I have, have done chaplaincy okay. in my past. Is that affecting why you're such an advocate for these changes? Because you've walked the prisons. I've never walked the prisons yes, I've worked with. I, there's no doubt. I, I, I know the human face of criminals, um, real human beings, both men and women, um, who have done some really stupid things, some very bad things, but have made changes and have made significant changes. What changes a person is when they encounter someone who loves them not punishment. And that's the thing that's difficult to communicate. The fear of crime wants us to respond with punishment. Is that the Christian response? For me, the Christian response is restoration, accountability, how to move this person beyond the prison wall or even not even put them in prison and come up with a solution that treats people more humanly. Tough on crime, absolutely. Love the individual. Bishop Gary Gordon, I think we're going to have to ask you to blog on this for Listen Up's website and uh, carry on the conversation there. Thank you very much Thank for being here. Thank you very with much, us. Lorna. Thank you. Okay. When we return, a look at some of the Christian resources being poured into Canada's prisons and prisoners. That's next. We need to hold the people out of control, and that's what we call the arms of the law. But how can we do that in a, in a way that still val values everyone? Mm -hmm.